At least one person was killed in a fire at the small Pars Petro Shushta refinery in Iran's Khuzestan province, state media reported. Iranian state media, citing the governor of Shushta town, said the fire is under control, but firefighters and rescue workers remain on alert at the scene. A local authority attributed the cause of the incident to a tanker collision with gasoline tanks and said the incident is under investigation. A local official in Iran's southwestern province of Khuzestan told state news agency Erna that several people were also injured. Footage broadcast on Iranian state television showed large flames engulfing the facility and thick black smoke billowing into the sky. This incident follows a similar incident in March when one person lost their life in a fire at an oil refinery in the southern Iranian port of Bandar Abbas. One person was killed and at least three others were injured in what the Israeli police described as a nationalistically motivated attack on Tuesday. The shooting occurred on a two-lane highway in the city of Jabna. Speaking to Israeli media, ACIA Haroni, a police spokesman, described the incident as a terror attack. One man injured in the attack died as he was brought to Asyuta Hospital, spokesperson for the hospital, Ohad Yehezkali, said. Israeli police say one officer was killed and four civilians were wounded in a shooting Tuesday on a highway in central Israel. Police did not immediately provide the identity of the shooter, but police spokeswoman, Mirit Ben Mayer, said that it was a militant attack. Police said the attacker approached the highway and shot the officer before firing on civilians, wounding four. The attacker was then shot by a paramedic arriving on the scene, Israel's rescue services said, without saying whether the attacker was killed. The shooting occurred on a two-lane highway near the city of Jabna, just south of Tel Aviv. Ohad Yehezkali, a spokesperson for nearby Asyuta Hospital, said the officer died on the way there and another civilian was being treated for moderate injuries. He said two more wounded people were being transported to the hospital. Palestinians have carried out dozens of stabbing, shooting and car ramming attacks against Israelis since Hamas' October 7 attack triggered the war in Gaza. A man who was convicted in Russia over social media posts which criticized the country's fight in Ukraine was released from prison on Tuesday. Alexei Moskalev, 55, a single father, was met by his daughter Maria outside the jail in Tula region. After his release, Moskalev told OVD Info about his experience spending two months in prison. He likened the conditions inside his cell to a torture chamber that was two meters by one meter in size. At first, I was sitting alone, then they put a second person in, he said. Moskalev also claimed that the jail's floors were rotten, rats were everywhere, coming from the sewers and everywhere. 
In 2022, his daughter refused to participate in a patriotic class at school and made a drawing which said, No to war, and, Glory to Ukraine. He was then investigated by police and indicted over a series of social media posts about Russia's activities in Ukraine. Moskalev was sentenced to two years in prison, but fled house arrest hours before the jail term was handed down. He was arrested in neighboring Belarus and extradited to Russia. Moskalev's daughter was dispatched to an orphanage following his arrest. Конечно, все эти два месяца я сидел. Условия были, ну, сказать, не сказать ничего. Это просто камера пыток. Это камера пыток, да, просто. Что находилось в камере? Во-первых, камера была 2 на 1 размер. Понимаете, что такое 2 на 1? Сначала один сидел, и потом второго посадили человека. Это мы вдвоем, два на один, вот в этой размере камеры сидели, полы гнилые, крысы повсюду, из канализации везде лежат, крысы огромные. Из одежды было только вот, вот этот вот лежит, и этот, все, и маечка, и на голое тело. На голое тело, да. Холод, это просто собачий. Это просто, знаете, не передать словами. 16 часов на ногах приходили стоять, потому что в кровати утром притягивались к стене, чтобы не могли ложиться. И 16 часов до отбоя мы стояли практически на ногах. Сидеть невозможно было, лавочка маленькая, металлическая. Настолько она была заколена ледяная, что на ней просто сидеть невозможно.